Yes, he's mad. I do so love custard. Or was it mustard? We removed your brain. Do you comprehend, commie animal? Get your act together. You're making us look like a collection of round earthers. Vivisect me, please. You think I don't know? I'm crazy. I sound the place I do. They hate me just to torture me. The things you do with our body are suicidally dangerous. You're a monster. A deranged monster. In yesterday's episode, we got to know each of the five think tank scientists a little better. We helped them out with their personal quests, and we discovered the homes they lived in before they became robots at Higgs Village. With them as allies, they may be able to help us sometime in the future. But for now, we need to continue searching for the three pieces of technology Dr. Klein asked us to retrieve. In episode two, we successfully retrieved the X2 antenna, and in today's episode, we head to the X8 facility to finally retrieve the force field destroying sonic frequency for our sonic emitter. Like the X2 transmitter antenna array from episode two, the X8 research center is easy to find. To find it, we just walk the concrete path east of the think tank. Along the way, we stumble upon the X-7B Boomtown Target Zone. This ruined town is right outside the doorstep to X-8. And after our conversation with the think tank scientists in yesterday's episode, these ruins carry with them horrifying significance. We learned that the scientists at the think tank needed live human specimens to test on. Even though vault seemed to be able to test on Americans with impunity, the researchers at Big Mountain had to jump through a number of governmental hoops. So what they ended up doing is rounding up Chinese American citizens and incarcerating them in concentration camps, one of which we find here in the Big Mountain, Little Yang Zi. They then made cities filled with these incarcerated Americans and tested upon those cities. The ruins we now explore are likely the ruins of one of those cities formerly inhabited by Chinese American prisoners. The place is highly irradiated. Without a hazmat suit, we will get advanced radiation poisoning extremely quickly. We see craters dotting the landscape filled with green goo, and some of them still have undetonated shells inside. We find one sitting in a pool of green goo, and on it it says, Saturn? Saturn I... Saturnite. We recall that Father Elijah said something about Saturnite technology. Is this concrete evidence that the Big Mountain scientists were indeed responsible for shelling the people who lived here? Exploring the ruins is profitable. We loot dozens of containers and can walk away with quite a lot of loot. In one of the houses, we find a Nuka-Cola victory lying on the ground. When done, we can continue east to explore the X-8 Research Center. The center is surrounded by a large concrete platform with a bunch of ruined vehicles on top. Looks like some of these trucks were in the middle of delivering something to this facility. When the bombs drop, we find lots of containers and crates in the back of them. Exploring the northern side of this facility is dangerous. A lot of lobotomites and night stalkers attack. That's right, we learned from talking with Dr. Boris in yesterday's episode that he was the one responsible for creating both Cazadors and night stalkers. Well, if we found night stalkers here, I guess it's likely that we'll find Cazadors as well. But these lobotomites that attacked were great news for me. On one of the corpses, I found a 44 Magnum revolver, exactly the kind of weapon my character is specced into. At last, I finally feel fully armed. After clearing all the enemies, it's important to explore every nook and cranny around this building. We find a whole lot of duffel bags, lockers, containers, and even shells littering the ground. When we're fully satisfied that we've explored everything, we can at last enter the X-8 research facility. The reason we're here is because we need to find the force field disrupting electromagnetic pulse wave upgrade for the sonic emitter. This is the frequency that's going to allow us to destroy force fields. To do so, the quest log tells us that we need to begin something called an institutional test at the X-8 test terminal. So we gotta find this terminal and start the test. We find ourselves in a large darkened room and there are two observation windows against the eastern wall. Peering inside, we see big machines with buzz saws attached, continuing to do surgery on some sort of pile of meat. Have these buzz saws been performing the same surgery for 200 years? 
Next to this observation window, we find a terminal on a desk. This is the X8 main terminal. Inside, we find three entries. The first, X8 test subject information. In this test, you will take on the role of one of those evil commies, infiltrating an institution of honest American learning. Don't worry, citizen. It's just for pretend. Your objective is to steal documents that a real dirty commie trader, which you are not, could use to brainwash our children, which you would never do. This test will help us to protect our children's fragile minds from the agents of international communism. Agents like you. Just kidding. We know you're a loyal American, aren't you? I don't get it. I thought they sent kidnapped American Chinese prisoners through all of these experiments. But in this terminal, they're referring to them as American citizens. Ah, but maybe this was just a ploy. Maybe they told the Chinese Americans that of course they're still Americans. They're only detained here for their own safety. But in reality, they made them go through these horrible tests because they had already decided that the Chinese American prisoners were traitors. The next one is an internal memo about the institutional test. Here we learn more about what to expect. The subjects will be informed that we are gauging the effectiveness of communist infiltration of American schools. They won't know about the cyber dogs until they actually begin the testing process. Did they throw a bunch of people into a school without telling them there would be dangerous cyber dogs? Number one, test A engages cyberdog protection protocols alongside standard automated turret systems. Number two, test B adds protectrons to the previous test. Test B also includes some basic tests for the field disruptor capacitance module. Aha, so the schematics for the force field buster for the sonic emitter must be in test B. We need to advance to test B to get what we need. In the final memo, a residential test internal memo. Until further notice, please do not enter the residential cyberdog test area or conduct any experiments using it. The cyberdogs are still being programmed, and any disturbance could have dramatic influence on their progress. Restricting access in this fashion should also help to avoid any repeats of incident playtime, settlements for which are coming directly out of our budget. Dr. Kale Richardson, PhD, Test Engineer, X8 Cyberdog Project. Well, I guess they must have tested on American volunteers as well, if they're paying out settlements to family members of people they killed during the experiment. Along the western wall of this room, we see a bunch of brains and jars. And we learned that they experimented on cyber dogs here, so I suppose these could be cyber dog brains, but they do look a little large for dog brains. They look human. We find two exits from this room, a door to the south with a stairway going down. But this leads to level two, and I get the impression there must be more on level one. So turning around and heading north, we can find a door to the splicing test area. As soon as we open the door, we have Mr. Handy's to destroy. <laughs> Inside, we find a small lab built atop some catwalks, and on one of the counters, we find a deluxe chemistry set. We can take the opportunity to make some stim packs, which I desperately need. Beneath an observation area sign is a first aid kit that we can loot, and then continuing along the catwalk, we can go down some steps into a little research pod. Here we find some ammunition in a footlocker and a terminal with two options. The first, biomechanical splicing rules, lays out the rules of of this machine we've apparently discovered. Rule number one, due to recent government mandated cutbacks to our funding, only three experiments may be performed per day. Number two, we do not have infinite kennel space here at X8. Only one cyber dog beyond those needed for the testing process may be created. Number three, clear any and all debris from the platform before conducting any splicing experiments. On number four, experiments are not allowed outside the X8 facility. And number five, finally, security must be disabled before experiments can run. Okay, so this is some sort of machine that does splicing. At the moment, we only find one option, splice lobotomite and robot. Well, diving in feet first. Who am I? I feel 
feel different, awake, alive for the first time ever. What is this strange new world around me? What does it hold in store for a dreamer such as myself? Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's horrible, but hilarious. <laughs> we created this poor new life, and he was filled with such curiosity, only to mechanically fail and explode. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> but in the process, we complete the challenge, evil genius, create an abomination. <laughs> we have indeed created an abomination, but we get the impression from reading the terminal that there are many other splicing options. To prepare for those, we can go back to the terminal and choose the option, clear the splicing area. This will remove the corpse of the robo-brain. Now, there are three other splicing options that are only unlocked as we continue to explore X8 and the X13 facilities. I'll show you where to get those holotapes when we get to those points, but I want to show you what we can produce while splicing now. After collecting all of the holotapes, we find an option that says splice lobotomite and dog. We complete the Mad Scientist Challenge, had an experiment go horribly awry, and we go over to the platform to see, oh, it's a pile of blood and guts. There's a lot of lobotomite loot on some of the guts, and then a dead dog, ah, oh, that's horrible. Going back and clearing the splicing area, we can choose Splice Robot and Unusual Specimen. We complete the automaton challenge, build a robot bent on destruction, and this robo-brain is violent! Well, note to self, don't cross a Night Stalker brain with a robot. The final option is to splice a robot and a dog. We don't complete any challenges, but we see a cyber dog on the platform and heading in, we learn that her name is Roxy. She looks a lot like Rex, but her brain case is red. Now, if we want, we can send her to wait for us at the entrance, in which case she just runs off, or we can tell her to join us as a temporary companion. She will then follow us around X8 while we conduct our tests here. Now, Roxy is just a temporary companion, and she doesn't follow us outside the X8 aid facility. If we ever leave and come back, we'll find her waiting for us in the front entry room. We can then have her follow us again, but only in the X8 building. Additionally, unlike the other companions in Fallout New Vegas, she's not immoral. If we fight the enemies in X8 at younger levels, the enemies are going to be weaker, and so she might survive. But if we take her with us at higher levels, the enemies are much stronger, and it's likely she'll die. Now, we don't want her to die because if we create Roxy, and if we keep her alive, at the end of the DLC, we find that she has a special ending. But we'll get to that in a dedicated video. Now that we've completed all of our splicing challenges, we can continue on our way. We see some steps leading down, and there's nothing down here but containers to loot. Heading back upstairs, we can go through the big chamber and then down the staircase to floor two. As soon as we reach the bottom of the stairs, we get attacked by two Mr. Handies. Although these are called Mr. Orderlies. They wield flamethrowers and they're really tricky. After they are destroyed, we can continue along and we reach a large room. This is going to be the primary testing room we will use to conduct the experiments. In the middle of this room, we find another surgical table with a corpse laid on top of it. The buzz saws are still spinning above. On the western end of the room, we find coffins, strangely enough. Some mentats on the floor and one of the coffins has a body in it sort of spilling out onto the floor. We see schematics of the cyber dog on the wall, and next to the schematics are the X8 main terminal. Inside we find three notes. The first, Electromagnetic Pulse Wave Module on Loan. The X13 facility has loaned to us their Electromagnetic Pulse Wave Module prototype for the sonic emitter for us to use in our data retrieval test simulations. The module allows the sonic emitter to disable certain force fields, 
do not allow test subjects to leave the X-8 facility with this module. Even though it won't work outside of Big Mountain, it's a security nightmare. Thank you all for your attention to this matter. Dr. Adam Figgis, MD, PhD, DVM, DDM, DD, Test Supervisor. In the next one, Project Burke and Project Hare. Yes, Project Burke involves what some less science-minded individuals might call grave robbing. Yes, we're forced into this due to budget cuts. No, none of senior staff uses the bodies for anything else. Finally, in regards to the room that Project Hare engages in liquidation operations against non-military targets to procure research subjects, I will not dignify them with a response. Any other questions? All right, well, Project Hare was clearly a real thing. They did procure research subjects from the American populace, so I guess we can presume that Project Burke was also real. They robbed graves, but for what purpose? Could this somehow explain the skeletons we saw walking around in those Y-17 suits in Episode 2? Incidentally, this entry is a reference to the Burke and Hare murders. In 1828, William Burke and William Hare began killing their lodgers and selling the bodies to a doctor named Robert Knox. This was during a period of time when the medical community was lacking fresh corpses to dissect to further the needs of science. At the time, grave robbing was a common practice. People could make a quick buck by digging up a local corpse and selling it to a scientist. After Burke and Hare Hare were caught, Hare ratted on Burke, Burke was executed, and in a twist of irony, his skeleton is on display at the Anatomical Museum of Edinburgh, even to this day. And the final note, important reminder to myself. While programming the new residential cyberdog model to retrieve objects thrown by human beings for purposes of enjoyment, I accidentally used an audio sample recording of its bark as the object to be fetched. The cyberdog has now become attached to the sample and displayed signs of aggressive tendencies when I attempted to recover it. I have left it in the residential reconstruction area until it is needed. I believe the cyberdog has buried it. Dr. Gail Richardson, PhD, Test Engineer, X-8 Cyberdog Project. Okay, so this means that there's a residential reconstruction area with a cyberdog inside. And it looks like we can get another frequency for our sonic emitter if we dig around a little bit. Well, if we don't already have a shovel, we can use the shovel on the ground by these coffins. So we'll make sure to bring that with us. On the other tables in this room, we see a robo-brain sans the brain with a human head next to it. And on the other tables, we find the dog and robot splicing experiment holotape. This is the holotape we need to create Roxy. Now, we have have three avenues forward. Things can get a little confusing here. To the south, there's a door to the testing area observation, but it's locked. It requires a key, so we can't go that way. To the east, there's a large door to the testing areas, also locked, requiring a key. And right next to this door is the X8 test terminal. Inside, we have one option, enter institutional data retrieval. We then have the option to start the basic test. After selecting this option, we complete a step in our quest and our quest log updates. Retrieve three student records from the desk terminals in the X-8 institutional facility. All right, so remember, we're pretending to be Chinese communist infiltrators who are infiltrating a high school. We need to access student records as part of this infiltration to complete the experiment. We learned in the previous terminal that the force field buster sonic wave we need only appears during test B. So we got to get through test A, this test first, before we get what we need. The terminal reads, For this test, you must use any means necessary to retrieve three student files from an average high school. Basic security protocols have been activated. You find success if you retrieve the files. You find failure if the security measures prohibit you from retrieving the files. A.K.A. You die. All right. Now that the basic test has been activated, we can start the test by opening the large door to the institutional test facility. Attention students, this is the pre-recorded voice of your pre-recorded principal, Dr. Principal Boros. You may know me as the head chief first researcher of labs Z9 and Z14. There I fought valiantly to preserve rattlesnake DNA and put it right where it belongs, in the husk of another feared predator. Oh, and the tarantula hawk. 
Can't splice enough, I always say. Especially if you can make a magnificent casserole. Enough about me. It has come to my attention that many of you seemingly innocent children have been subverted by red propaganda. This is a most serious matter, requiring the most serious of detentions. Can you spell detention? I'll tell you how I spell it. Death tension. Commie Pico traitors. Oh! Now I will send vicious cybernetic cyborg dogs through the corridors to weed all you traitors out. They will sniff out which among you have chosen the Kami path. Especially you, Betsy Bright, who turned me down to the high school dance so you could smoke with Richie Marcus. All monitors will also be vigilant. Step outside during class, and they'll make sure you make a speedy jump back to your desk. Hold your urine, and wait for the proper bathroom break time. We see that Dr. Boris has recreated his high school from his youth. He was bullied so severely as a child that he has made himself principal over this fake high school just to feel better about himself. How sad. Now we see the force fields in action on some of these display cases, but our sonic emitter can't deactivate them yet because we haven't retrieved the right frequency. As we continue forward, we also see force fields blocking our path. This forces us to take the long way to complete the challenge. There was a terminal on the wall in the first room where we entered, but we can't access it yet. This must be where we download the force field buster frequency during test B. And almost as soon as we reach the main hallway, we get attacked by a turret and a military cyber dog. At the end of this hallway, we hear the wild wasteland noise. At first, I didn't get what this was for. I had to look it up, but it's for the word Wolverines spelled out on the wall. This is a reference to the 1984 movie Red Dawn, where in an alternative timeline, similar to the Fallout worlds, the Soviet Union invaded and occupied America. In the movie, a group of American high school students resisted the Soviets using guerrilla warfare, and they called themselves the Wolverines after their high school mascot. Now we heard in that pre-recorded speech from Dr. Boris that he referred to himself as the principal. This sparked a memory. In my video on The Survivalist, during my series on the Honest Hearts DLC, we learned from one of Randall Clark's terminal entries that when he first discovered the children, the children who grew up to become the Sorrows tribe, he overheard them talking a lot about a man called the principal. And that's all the information he gives us. Randall Clark never learned any more about who this principal was, and the children who grew up to become the Sorrows eventually forgot all about the principal. But here we are one DLC later, and we find Dr. Boris referring to himself as the principal, lording over a fake high school he created to conduct experiments using captives. It may be that the children whom Randall Clark discovered in Zion Canyon were escaped test subjects from the Big Empty. My bet is that after the bombs dropped, after the Great Static, as the think tank scientists describe it, there was chaos at Big Mountain. Security was down, they hadn't established everything yet, and this allowed some of the Chinese-American captives to escape. What if there were a group of Chinese-American prisoners going through this high school test the day the bombs dropped? Everyone became distracted, and this gave them the opportunity to sneak away. They managed to find their way to Zion Canyon to start a brand new life, but in the back of their mind, they were continually terrified by memories of none other than the principal who tormented them inside a high school he created to satisfy his bullied childhood self, Dr. Boris. The first terminal we need to activate to complete this quest is inside what appears to be a science classroom. Here we find the X8 Institutional Test Terminal, and we can retrieve the student records. The first is the records of Richie Marcus. These are his midterm grades, and in the terminal he is nicknamed Richie Ballover Marcus. F minus in English, F minus in math, F minus minus in science, and an F minus in history. Dr. Boris really had it in for his bully Richie Marcus, inventing a report card of F minus minuses just to shame him. Oh, what a delirious fantasy. 
Despite this being a test high school, there's still a lot of loot to be found here. Lots of containers, plenty of bottle caps, and lots of scrap. Now we can activate a nearby wall-mounted monitor to take control of the turret, but I had already destroyed it. We find another section blocked off by a force field. Hopefully later on we'll be able to loot these. Heading out this door brings us right back where we started. Looks like we've gone in a big loop. So heading back in, we go down the hallway until we reach the library. You are in the library. In the library, we kill a bunch of lobotomites until we find a terminal in the northwestern corner. On this terminal, we can retrieve student records where we find the records of Sherry O'Bannon's schedule. Ballet. Tuesday and Thursday, 4.30 to 6.30. Pep Squad, Wednesday, 4.15 to 5.15. Tutoring Center Volunteer, Monday, 4.15 to 6 o'clock. Okay, well, this is a little confusing to me. Dr. Boris hasn't complained about anyone from his childhood named Sherry O'Bannon, at least not that I recall. And this entry doesn't seem to be insulting. You'd think that if Boris was going to make up a schedule for this person, he would make up something humiliating, like he did for Richie Marcus the ball lover. Maybe this Sherry O'Bannon person was someone he remembers fondly from high school. Maybe a girl who treated him well. After looting the place, we see some cyber dogs appear from an opening to the northwest. When done, we can go down the northwest hallway and we see a bunch of interesting posters on the wall. A is for America. B is for bomb. C is for commie. D is for dirty commie. <laughs> the hallway is blocked off to the west, so we turn north to go up some stairs to floor number two. This brings us to a locker-lined hallway with a bunch of randomized loot, which ends at a door to the south. This brings us to a ledge overlooking the library, guarded by a turret and a cyber dog. Once the turret is destroyed, we see a turret control terminal to the southwest that we missed. Well, too late now, the turret's gone. And we see a large force field creating a floor above the library, which is interesting. We may be able to use this to our advantage in the future. On the eastern side of this hallway, we find an average locked door. This just leads us to a supply closet where we can walk away with a lot of purified water, stim packs, and other chems. To continue forward, we open the big double doors on the southern side of this platform. Down at the end of the hall is ball storage for jocks who like balls. Like Richie Marcus. Do you hear me, Betsy? Richie likes balls. Subtle, Dr. Boris. Very subtle. As we creep through the doors, we see two cyber dogs crawl forward. <laughs> Once they're dead, we see the exit to the east, but we need one more terminal. So heading west, we can go through a door which leads us to a room with some sort of locked gate. Next to the gate is a desk and on the desk, a terminal. Inside the terminal, we find the next student records. These belong to Betsy Bright. Betsy Bright's disciplinary record. Unexcused absences, seven. Disruptive behavior, three. Smoking on school property, 11. Oh, how shameful. With that, we complete this portion of the quest and retrieve all three student records from the facility. As soon as we read the final record, we get attacked from behind by more cyber dogs. And at last, we can unlock the gate. Here we find a room filled with balls. Oh, so it wasn't a euphemism. He was talking about literal balls. That's right, because this is the coach's office and Richie Marcus must have been a jock. Got it, okay. We don't find much here but a BB gun and minor loot, and so heading down the hallway, we can leave the high school. Oh my, you got to the residential test. This is really Boros, by the way. And hello again. None of us thought you would get this far. Oh, so that wasn't a recording of Boris. Okay, so they're watching me go through this. Our quest log updates with two more tasks. We need to initiate the residential cyberdog guard test and 
begin the advanced institutional test. But we arrived in some sort of research lab. We see a hologram of what looks like the K-9000 gun in the middle of the room. Well, this is exciting. My K-9000 broke earlier. I was an idiot and I forgot to get weapon repair kits and so I allowed it to break and I didn't have enough money to repair it. Hopefully we'll be able to walk away with another one. Looting the nearby containers, we find a whole lot of ammunition. 357 Magnum rounds, which is great because that's what the K-9000 uses. And then in the southeastern corner, we find the X-8 Observatory Terminal. Here we find three entries, the first X-12 request for assistance. We've had a small issue with one of our Y-17 trauma harnesses. Sadly, a member of the X-12 research team choked on a buffalo gourd seed and died while working late last night. Oh my gosh. For some reason, his Y-17 trauma harness will not shut down. In fact, it has begun malfunctioning and causing the late Mr. Harris to attack other employees. Do you have any prototypes you could lend us as a means to stop it? Oh, these Y-17 harnesses must be big mountain technology that can reanimate the dead. Adam from X-8 responds by saying, Assistance granted. I'm sending over the K-9000 Cyberdog gun. It should do the trick. Let me know if you have any operational questions. In the final note, we see K-9000 Cyberdog gun sealed in X-12. We've had another unfortunate occurrence. While attempting to destroy Mr. Harris's trauma harness, the disaster control team member carrying the gun slipped and fell, dropping the weapon. Unarmed, the team had to flee and seal off the lab. Unfortunately, your K-9000 Cyberdog gun prototype was sealed inside X-12. Well, this is great news. We can get a new version of the K-9000 by heading on over to X-12, but it seems likely that we'll run into more of those Y-17 walking harnesses. We'll have to be sure that we're prepared. We go through a northern door to leave, and as we do, we see a room filled with five cyber dogs playing poker around a table. On the wall, we see a chalkboard with a vault girl petting one of the dogs and the words, sit, stay, kill, written above. This is a reference to a famous series of paintings called Dogs Playing Poker. The very first Dogs Playing Poker painting was created by Cassius Marcellus Coolridge in 1910. He was commissioned by the Brown and Bigelow Cigar Company to create this painting to advertise their cigars. These paintings have since become famous around the world and in America, and this is a clue to the final reference, Sit, Stay, Kill. Like the Dogs Playing Poker, there's another famous piece of wall art people like to hang in their homes which simply has the words live, laugh, love. We find these for sale in department stores even today. I think the developers were mocking this with their own version of the live, love, laugh, only this time, sit, stay, kill. Anyway, as we continue forward, we hear Dr. Klein over the PA system. The residential test wasn't shut down for some reason. We come upon a Protectron, and after destroying him, we hear Dr. Boris respond to Dr. Klein. My pet, Gabe. I'd forgotten about the old boy and the countless experiments I'd done on him back at his. Gabe? Gabe, you're about to have your favorite treat. A visitor. Won't that be nice? Don't eat the visitor, boy. Don't, please. So this residential test was shut down because of Gabe? Are we about to meet Gabe? As we round the corner, we can get rid of another Protectron. And peering out the window, we see that we're going through some sort of elevated pod above the high school. This was likely an observational pod. Gabe would bark and snarl and bite whenever anyone came to visit. That's why I replaced his legs with spare parts and fed him a steady diet of psycho. Psycho-laced dog chow, that's right. In yesterday's episode, we learned that Dr. Boris continued to feed his dog Gabe Kems. If Gabe is still alive after all of these years, well, God knows what kind of mood he's in. Now, we have two paths before us, both of which are labeled exit. We can turn west or we can go north. Heading north first, we see a door that presumably leads out. So turning around and going west, we find ourselves in a large workshop room. There's a workbench against a wall, lots of cabinets and shelves filled with scrap. And we see two paths, one to residential observation and the other to the kennel. Going down the path to recreational observation, we can kill another lobotomite, and then we pass by an observational window where Dr. Boris expresses his regret. Gabe, I am sorry I put your brain in a bowl, boy. Oh, who's a good boy? 
After clearing the pod of even more lobotomites, we arrive at a room overlooking a house or multiple houses inside some sort of cave. There are plenty of containers to loot here, and on one of the tables we find the X-8 Observatory Terminal. Inside, four entries. The first, shipping department, unusual shipment. Dr. Richardson, we've just received the latest shipment of dogs for the CyberDog experiment process. But, well, frankly, I think our supplier screwed us. The animals must be basically feral. Every time we get close to the shipping kennels, they let out with the most god-awful hissing sound. And, well, rattling is the only way I can describe it. Please advise, should we open the kennels or just send them back? Looks like someone was shipped some of Dr. Boris's Night Stalkers. And the next one, shipping department, please advise. So at Dr. Richardson's request, we opened one of those kennels from our latest shipment. The dog inside, and I use that term very loosely, appeared to be suffering from a truly horrendous case of mange. And upon being released, it immediately attacked, killed, and attempted to swallow whole specialist acres. Luckily, the situation has, for now at least, contained itself, as specialist acres was a very large man, and the creature has choked to death. <laughs> Does anyone know anything about this shipment? Please advise. So we found the Night Stalker weakness. Very large people. In the third one, shipping department in lockdown, in light of the large number of fatalities due to the latest shipment of experimental test subjects, the shipping department is going into lockdown. I give you my personal assurance that as soon as this plague of monsters has been dealt with, I will work overtime to get your deliveries to you in a timely and efficient manner. As I am currently the only surviving member of the shipping department, however, there may still be some delays. Until then, Dr. Callus in X-13 has the pass card for the area. Skippy, sole survivor. Well, it's a tragic story for the poor shipping department, but we learn an important thing, that the key to the kennels is in X-13. In the final note, regarding shipping department lockdown, in our last supervisor meeting, we discussed the possible benefits of the small shipping accident. We are considering studying the unexpected specimen's behavior by releasing them into our test area before removing them from the X-8 facility. The shipping department will remain in lockdown until a decision has been reached. Dr. Adam Figgis, MD, PhD, DVM, DDM, DD, test supervisor. On the table next to the terminal is the dog and lobotomite splicing experiment holotape, which we can use at the splicer. So Dr. Boris accidentally sent some of his Night Stalkers to the X-8 facility, instead of dogs like he was supposed to. And after killing most of the shipping department, the key to the kennels was sent to X-13. But the X-8 staff decided to take advantage of the opportunity to run yet another experiment. In place of the cyber dogs, they wanted to do the high school test again, but this time with Night Stalkers. Those poor prisoners. But it looks like they never had an opportunity to run this experiment, which I guess means that the facility is set up for us to run it. Out of this room, we find a hallway to the kennel, but the door to the kennel is locked. Okay, we need that key from X-13 to unlock it. So heading back the way we came, we can exit the observation area to the testing room where we started. To continue, we activate the X-8 test terminal. We can then go through with the second portion of this quest by choosing to enter the residential cyber dog guard test. However, we learn that the parameters of this test are incomplete. Beware of dog. As we exit, we hear the rooms behind the door rearrange themselves to accommodate the new test. And going through the same door we used to access the high school, we appear in that cave with the houses. Now, let the intruder have the sonic emitter's demands. Climb water, all right, boy? Let the intruder take it up wherever you buried it. We see Gabe walking around in the darkness, and he is huge. Thankfully, we were crouched when we entered, so he doesn't see us yet, which allows us to get off some sneak criticals. After an intense battle with our sonic emitter, we finally kill Gabe. Gabe! No! His cyber dog atomic core! It's active! That means an exceedingly imprecise countdown to critical failure in... Ted! Boros! Why the hell did you install an atomic core? It'll blow when we reach one, right? Nine. Oh, we'll be fine. 
Seven. Yes. Seven. Six. Halfway to destruction. Measured in clicks. Five by five. Someone's coming in line. Four. As in forbidden. Do you hear me, Think Tank? It is I, Mobius, hacking your frequency. Mobius. Uh, three. As in we. As in we are in trouble. That didn't rhyme. Two. As in too late. And one. As in Mobius has won. I hope it's glowing up right now in your faces. After that cacophony of information, we can finally use our shovel to search the ground for that sonic emitter that we read about. Now, there are half a dozen or so digging spots around this cave where Gabe may have buried the sonic frequency, and its placement is random from game to game. So it pays to explore everything. On Gabe's body, we found some unique loot. A laser rifle called L-A-E-R. This stands for Laser Assisted Electrical Rifle. It's a pretty powerful laser weapon, dealing 65 damage for a total of 162.5 DPS. We'll find mods to improve this weapon, and we'll find unique versions later on. The other unique item we looted is called a Valence Radi Accentuator, presumably made from the same material used to create force fields. It fills the eyeglass slot, which means we can use it with some hat. It has 3 DT, grants us 1 endurance, and has a unique effect that regenerates our health. However, not by very much. It regenerates 1 HP every 5 in-game minutes. So it only regenerates 12 HP every 1 in-game hour. It's pretty cool looking, appearing like some sort of blue halo around the courier's head. After completely exploring this cave and digging up all of Gabe's digging spots, we at last find the audio sample Gabriel's Bark. This, like the other sonic emitter frequencies, has bonuses against robots and power armor wearers, but its unique effect is the knockback effect. It does 55 damage for 56.9 DPS and a chance to knock back an enemy on a successful critical hit. It also has a unique looking dial, dark red, with a yellow wave going through it. This is not the frequency we need to tear down force fields, this is just another additional frequency we can use to help out in combat. As soon as we loot the frequency... So, you recover the sonic emitter schematic! Ew, was it the frequency? No matter! It'll broadcast your screams as my roboscopians destroy you! We gain the achievement Spinal Tapped, and Dr. Mobius sends his Robo-Scorpions at us. As we leave, we see that Robo-Scorpions have infested all of X-8. If we kill Gabe and return to Dr. Boris, he says... So, you put down Gabe. Thank you. A scam, but really, his highly augmented combat programming could have proved meddlesome. In any event, thank you for putting him down. One less test subject to catalog and sort. Clearly a failure of Doggy's cyber-engineering. But it's also possible to retrieve Gabriel's bark without killing Gabe. It's pretty tricky to do so. We have to remain stealthed while we dig up all of his digging spots, and then we need to hightail it out of there as soon as possible before the robo-scorpions that Dr. Mobius sends kills Gabe. But if we are successful, if we return to Boris with Gabe still alive, he says... Thanks so much for sparing Gabe. I know he's really quite killable, which is why I had to augment him. But you needed none of that. You're quite elusive, or fleet-footed, more so than our old mailman. He didn't get far before Gabe caught him. With the Robo-Scorpions cleared, we can go back to the terminal to continue with part B of our experiment. We find a new option, the advanced test.
When we enter, we again hear Boris's voice over the PA. The major difference, however, is that all paths are now blocked with force fields. This gives us only one choice, to check out that terminal that was empty that we explored earlier. Inside, we find the sonic emitter data. We then have an option to download the electromagnetic pulse wave module. Attached to this message is the data I collected regarding the EM pulse wave module's effect on our force field emitters. I'm sending the prototype weapon your way for testing. With that, we unlock the EM pulse wave and the sonic emitter can now be used to disable force fields. We can use any sonic frequency we like, Revelation, Tarantula, Gabriel's Bark, and they will all disable force fields. To try it out, we can go down the hallway and remove the force field that was blocking off that one loot corner we saw earlier. <laughs> And once we try it out, we complete the quest, Sonic Emitter Upgrade. We now have two of three needed technologies. In this corner, we find some throwing axes, and then a bunch of scrap and randomized loot. Now, we need to complete the advanced quest. But it takes place in the same fake high school. There's no need for me to walk you through the entire thing again. Really, the only changes are we can take shortcuts now that we can destroy some of the force fields. This allows us to skip through the test much more quickly. We can also use the emitter to take advantage of unique opportunities to destroy enemies. And going through the experiment again gives us more opportunities to hear Dr. Boris's mad ravings. Today, the cafeteria will be serving nothing because I didn't build one. No cafeteria, no bathrooms, no swirlies, no chocolate pudding left in the chairs of brilliant minds. What are you going to do now, Richie Marcus? School is a sacred trust. Even though I am a long ago graduate of this hated facility, now I see its worth and see it was corrupted by fraternities and girls. Yuck. I am lord of this institution, where once, long ago, I was a student here. No, I am its omnipotent god principle, as I soon will be lord of Big Mountain. To do. Do you hear that? It is my trumpet of victory. After accessing the student records from all three terminals and clearing the place, we can leave the same way we did last time. Now we have the force field busting frequency we need, but we can complete all of the side quests here at X8. The final thing we need is to get the key to the kennels. Now remember, we read from one of the terminals that the key is in the X13 facility. I'll cover exactly where when I do my video on X13, but after we retrieve the key, we can go back to X8 and use the key to unlock the kennel door. However, as soon as we open it, a bunch of Night Stalkers attack, and in my weakened state without the appropriate armor, I died very quickly. There is another way to access the kennels. Remember when we went to the observational pods, we saw a door to the kennels that was previously locked. Instead of going through the front door, we can go through this door in the observation area, which leads us to a catwalk overlooking the kennels. Here we can loot a combat helmet and a bunch of ammunition from some ammunition crates. And then we can jump down from the catwalk on top of the cages. On one of the cages, we find the robot and Night Stalker splicing experiment holotape. And from here, we can kill the Night Stalkers from safety. Once they are dead, we can access a terminal against the eastern wall. It has all of the same shipping department entries we read in the observation area, but it has one new one release the unusual specimen. This replaces the cyber dogs in the high school test with night stalkers. We can always switch the experiment back to cyber dogs using this terminal at any time. Also on the desk next to this terminal are schematics for the K9000 Fido. We can create Fido from any workstation. Heading to the workbench in the observational room, we find a new option, K9000 Fido Cyberdog Gun Upgrade. All it requires to craft is one K9000 Cyberdog Gun and a gun skill of 75. The Fido is very similar to the K9000, but when we equip it, it has a deeper bark. Also, instead of a Labrador Retriever, it has a Bulldog decal on the front. 
It also glows red instead of yellow, and uses 44 Magnum rounds instead of the 357 rounds that the K9000 uses. It therefore does higher damage, but it also has higher spread. It does significantly more damage than the K9000, with a damage of 36 compared to 26 bringing the DPS up to 252. However, the DPS for the Fido is not quite as large as a fully upgraded K9000. Its DPS is 274.4. We can test out our new best friend Fido here in X8 by going back to the terminal inside the main testing lab and going through a basic test now that Cyberdogs have been replaced with Night Stalkers. Going through the door, we appear at the high school just like we always did, but instead of the Cyberdogs, we've got these Night Stalkers and they are devastating. They just tear right through us. Thankfully, this Fido weapon is amazing. Slicing through these Night Stalkers like a hot knife through butter. Once we collect all three student records and exit, we now have to go through the high school a fourth and final time. This is replaying the advanced test with the Night Stalkers instead of the Cyber Dogs. Heading inside, we go through the whole thing again, and when complete, we exit the facility. With that, we complete the challenge Dog Run 3, and the experiments are done. Now it's time to collect the data from the experiments. What did science learn? Going back to the terminal just outside the door, we find a new option, Unusual Specimen Test Results. After selecting it, we download the results to our Pip-Boy, and we complete the quest X8 Data Retrieval. And we get a new perk, the DNA Agent perk. Our study of the abominations created at Big Mountain has granted us a damage bonus of plus 10% against Night Stalkers. And with that, we have uncovered every secret within X8. The lobotomite has retrieved two, count them, two of the three technologies. If you think braving the cyber dogs of X8 makes you brave, intruder, it is no use. All cyber dogs are under my command, and they will bite you. But there is so much left to do. We have to retrieve the stealth suit. We need to find the trails of Father Elijah and Christine, and find out whoever that other courier is. Not to mention confronting Dr. Mobius in his forbidden dome. If you want to make sure that you don't miss the next video in this series, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a new shirt in the shop, folks. Away, true to Kaisar. That's right, Legion fans, I haven't forgotten about you. We've got a big Legion bull on the front and on the back, an iconic Legion mask with the words Retribution. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video. The Uncanny Valley Research Center has been canceled until further notice. As in, until someone notices it.